So I wanted to, to grab you guys while we had the opportunity and, and chat a little bit about what I think is a phenomenal story. I'm not sure if there's anything in the water. Um, and I've asked this question to, to many great bases over the years, why it exists. But if nothing else, just acknowledging this tremendous legacy of bass players that that hail from Philadelphia, spent time in Philadelphia. And we were we were kind of talking unofficially a few moments ago about the, the list of folks. And we started naming folks. So I'm going to pick up there uh, and start with the great Lee Smith and the great Christian McBride. Um, but piggybacking on that, you know, in this direct line here is Howard Cooper as mm -hmm. well. And the three of you have performed as, as a trio of bassists in the past. Yeah. Um, how did that come about? How did that trio project come together with the three of you? Was that just impromptu or was that something that you guys had spoke about? If you can give me a little perspective on, on the three family members yeah, when, coming when together. When did we do that? Was that 2007 or 8? Something like it that? It could have been. It was uh, one of your concerts at, yeah, the, at, the, Kimmel uh, at the Kimmel Center. Yeah. And uh, I, I was asked to curate an evening. So I had four different bands. Uh, I did something with Bruce Hornsby that night, my quintet, Inside Straight. I played with a, uh, a group of Philly Cats, Dave Posmentier, uh Byron Landham, Joe Sutler, Odin Pope. Um, oh, my God. Somebody else. Was Julian Presley on the gig, wow. maybe? I can't remember. I don't remember Julian. Um, yeah, I don't. Re oh goodness, I don't remember. But uh, anyway, the fourth group was the was the bass family trio <laughs> <laughs> with yeah. uh, Dad and, and Uncle Howard. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Yeah, and then we did it again in in Brooklyn. Okay. Uh, a few years back with Marshall Allen. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think there's video of that yes. out on YouTube mm -hmm. as yeah. well. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and again, just sticking with that. Jamaluddin Takuma has a Basso Nouveau ensemble that features um, folks like Tyrone Brown um, and, and Warren Ory, uh, you know, and, and folks like that um, as well. So to one, you know, when you say a bass trio or a bass quartet, you know, folks look at you kind of funny oftentimes, but in Philadelphia, it's not necessarily I think a unique they situation. Was, I think they would look funny if you had any four instruments <laughs> together in one band. <laughs> but saxophone quartets, <laughs> you know, sometimes, uh, you know, seem to be a little bit, I think, more acceptable. Well, that's about the only one. Yeah. The string quartet yeah. and the saxophone yeah. quartet, but if yeah. you put four drummers in one band. <laughs> <laughs> it, depending on the drummers, it could be phenomenal. You give oh, me some yeah, thoughts, you give me some thoughts. Right but, chemistry. you know, again, um, you know, when you start going down that list of, of great bases, you know, I, we were we were mentioning folks like Spanky DeBrest right. and, and Henry Grimes. And, you know, when you look at Jimmy Merritt and the totality of, you know, his system of music, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and early on dabbling with the electric, you sure. know, Bass, sure. um, and and he's been sampled by folks like Tribe Called Quest, and you know, so Jimmy Merritt is just a, a phenomenal figure standalone. But then you start looking at the Stanley Clarks and and what he's done to bring the bass to the forefront, to the front of the stage. Jocko Pastorius. Well, see, if you start naming names, we'll be here all day. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You know, you know what's going to happen? This is going to show up on YouTube. And, and somebody, somebody's, somebody's going to be left out. Oh, you didn't leave. You didn't mention <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, so all of these great bases. And, you know, again, I think one of the things for me is just trying to drill in down and, and looking at why these type of things developed. And, again, there seems to be a bit of camaraderie. camaraderie. And I, I did an interview with Victor Bailey a few years back, um, the late great Victor Bailey, and he spoke about that, you know, as well. You know, as well. You know, he named you as one of his primary influences. <laughs> really? Yep. Oh wow! I'm in in uh, Bass Player Magazine many oh. years ago. Yep. Look at that. Great. You yep. know, so it, but again, Victor, you know, he spoke about being competitive early on, and he may have said some things about some folks that you know he regretted later. But as he as he matured, he saw the camaraderie and this this family of bass players, mm. you know, from Philadelphia. Um, you know, you guys having that, that, you know, and again, I think for folks, um, three bass players, four bass players, how do you stay in your own lane um, as a bassist in that type of configuration? I mean, if you can talk a little bit about that, that type of process of three bass players performing on stage together, obviously it's a lot of fun for you, but technically... Okay, we... Well... 
Speaking personally, I, I believe that um, it calls for a certain level of uh, musical maturity because uh, I feel like unlike the old jam sessions where the horn players, usually sax players, but trump trumpet players, they're battling each other. And I never wanted to or thought about battling another bass player. Uh, especially this guy here. <laughs> uh, After the, he got to a certain size. I, I <laughs> but the bass, I feel, is, uh, you know, even though it's looked at as being in the anchor and this big, broad-sounding instrument, I, I feel like um, um, the expression is quite delicate uh, in terms of technique. It can be. And for me personally, I always felt and I think most p bass players feel the need to compliment who they're playing with. Because that's our primary role, mm -hmm. as, especially as a sideman. You know, you compliment mm -hmm. whatever's happening. So if you're playing with another bass player, you want to compliment him. A lot of times, depending on your state of mind, you know, your ego, <laughs> you know, you hear something and it's like, oh, oh I could do that too, you know. Well, that's why I want to get his take on it <laughs> <laughs> as well. Go ahead, uh, Chris. I mean, I don't think bass players have ever gotten a lot of work with that sort of mentality. We're, we're support players first. That's our primary role, you know. Now, if we get a solo, you do what you, as much as you can. Uh, but our primary job is to make sure the, 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 the whole band is supported. So, um, yeah, it's never, I don't think bass players, it's not in our DNA to sort of battle no. You know, e even when we're playing together, we still got to support each other. Even when and when we're somebody playing together, has to hold it down. You know, somebody yeah. has to hold it down. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we we had spoke a little bit before we uh, got started officially. You know that line, and you know I remember um, again talking to to Victor about Weather Report and Jocko. You know, from Norristown, um, Alfonso Johnson. You know, Philadelphia guy, um, Gerald Veasley, you know, with the Zalno Syndicate. And, you know, again, Victor playing with Weather Report. You know, it just seems odd that, you know, you have these four basic players with roots in Philadelphia that end up with a phenomenal band like that. And, you know, they, Victor spoke a little bit again about um, Zalno noticing. Um, how significant, sure. you know, these bass players that come out of Philadelphia are. They're giving him what he wants. So Z he kept on that, that line. Zawano actually told me one time backstage at the Blue Note, he said if uh, if you took Philadelphia and Cameroon off the map, <laughs> American music would be a lot different. <laughs> He's, I don't get it. All these bass players from Philadelphia and Cameroon, never seen anything like it. <laughs> uh, speaking of that lineage, uh, you mentioned some electric players, uh, but uh, I'm thinking of some of the older acoustic players who have this, a similar lineage from Philadelphia and a lot of them worked with Lee Morgan. Uh, the Reggie Workmans. And, the and Reggie Workmans. Yeah. Uh, you know, just so many. Steve and then Davis, they, you mentioned. Steve Davis, yeah. yeah. Arthur Harper. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy right. Garrison. Jimmy Garrison, yeah. Uh, a lot of them worked with Lee. Uh, a lot of them worked with uh, Art Blakey. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and uh, it kind of makes you wonder how that <laughs> What's happens. What's going on there, yeah. And I've stopped... Asking stop trying myself to, uh, uh, why. Yeah, well, you know, I, we had Reggie here with us uh, last year, um, along with Odin. Um, and they, they kind of chat as we're chat, you know, chatting right now. And it was it was great to hear them talk about um, running the streets with Philly Joe. You know, they had this hearse that they would go to. You know, if the if the bar didn't have a, a organ or a piano, they would put it in a hearse and mm -hmm. take it to the bar. Uh, you know, sure. they were going to play. They were going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know that that legacy of great bass players, and we could, of course, could talk about drummers and what have you as well. But there's definitely a unique thing here in Philadelphia with uh, you know the, the masters of, of this instrument. So to have the two of you here today, 
um, to just spend a few minutes talking about the, the history of this, some of the great musicians who, who've been part of it, and of course your efforts to, to you know help put it out there and bring it to the forefront. I uh, really appreciate you taking a little Thank time you. out and sharing with the... Uh, with the folks out there. First Thank time you. we've ever done an interview together. That's kind of hip. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So history today at WRTI. Let's call Howard. Get him on the phone. <laughs> but that'll be uh, volume two. There you go. <laughs> but again, right. thank you so much. Really thank appreciate you, it. Thank you. Always.